Hey guys, it's Matt R with AppleMediaCenter.com and today we are going to go over how to install and configure SAB NZBD on OS X. Uh, there is one requirement and that is that you have Usenet access. If you don't have it, click the button that just popped up around Usenet access and if you do, let's get the show on the road. Now before we actually start the tutorial, I want to say uh, two quick things. The first is, I'm actually reading the exact tutorial uh, that's on the website as I go along so that everything I said on the website is exactly how it's going to play out on this video. Um, the second thing is I appear to live in a neighborhood that is made of kindling because fire trucks go back and forth about 50 times a day. So if you hear a fire truck behind me, I apologize for that. Okay, let's start the tutorial. First thing we're going to do is download SAB NZBD. So we're going to go to Google. We're going to go to sabnzbd.org. And since we're on OS X, we're going to click the Mac OS X .dmg installer. Ignore everything else. We don't need it. Now, I've actually already downloaded it, so I'm just going to close this up and go down here. And let's see. I'm going to drag this here. Oh, it's asking me to authenticate because I'm very special. I'm going to replace the one I have. I'm going to type this in. You won't need to worry about this. It's copying the applications folder. And you know what? We are pretty much done with this. We're just going to go in to the application folder and open SAB NZBD for the first time. You close that out. Close this out too, actually. Okay, so the very first thing that it asks us is uh, what is our language? Now, if you don't speak English, uh, you probably can't understand what I'm saying in this video, but uh, I'm guessing most of you will, or we'll take one of the other guys. So we're going to click Start Wizard with English and go from there. Now, the next thing it's asking us for is our um, server provider. This is our Usenet provider. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't have Usenet, you need to. Otherwise, this will not work at all. So get it now and come back, or just in insert the stuff you have. Um, I'm going to put my information in, and bear with me here, because I'm, I'm using two computers to type all this stuff up. I'm just going to go to, uh, let's see, news.powerusenet.com. I'm going to do this port. Uh, I'm going to put in my username. I'm going to put in the password, which is very hard to see. Uh, okay. I'm going to put the number of connections. For me, with Power Usenet, it's eight. And I'm not going to check SSL. So now we're going to hit test server. And it works. If for some reason it doesn't work, make sure your port is correct and also make sure that your connections are. Uh, co I won't say correct, but low enough that you aren't maxing them out. So now I'm going to go ahead to the next step. Uh, this is about access. And what we want to do is click the one that says, I want SAB NZBD uh, to be available on my PC and on my network. Uh, we'll get into why you want that in another tutorial, but trust me, that's what you want. What we also want to do is assign a password. Now this is not your OSX username or your OSX password. This is literally anything you want. It could be boats and hose. It could be, I don't know, that's, that's all I've got. I'm going to put in AMC, which stands for Apple Media Center, and I'm going to make up a really crappy password. But you should make a good password because this is important. I'm not going to enable uh, HTTPS, but I am going to leave this checked off right here. And then I'm going to click Next. And the next thing is um, services. If you have access to uh, Newsbin or NZB Matrix, you put that in. But if you're actually a beginner and you're learning about this, don't worry about this. This is completely optional. We will get to this in another tutorial, but right now we don't need this at all. So we're just going to skip ahead. And believe it or not, that is the basic tutorial on how to install um, SAB NZBD. You will have this pop up and if you put a, a few, um, put a password and login in, and it'll you want to put the ones you have if it didn't already pop up, and that will allow you to load the site for the first time. If you ever restart and log back into SAB NZBD, you'll be asked for that again as well. It's all about security. Now, it opened up a new tab, and I'm actually going to draw a little attention to this one over here. Uh, th these are the three ways you can connect to SAB NZBD um, when you're on your computer network. The very first one is localhost, and the localhost is actually the local computer. So if you're running this on a Mac Mini somewhere in your house, if you were to type that address on your Mac Mini in a web browser, SAB NZBD would pop up. If you were to type that on another computer, it would not pop up. However, if you go to King Crab, King Crab is actually the name of my computer I'm on right now, which is an iMac. My Mac Mini is named something else that's sushi-esque. Um, if I were to click this, or if I were to go to this on a different computer on my network, but not on the main computer, it would actually pull up SAB NZBD on 
um, whatever computer I'm on. This goes for anything in the network. This last one here is actually the same exact thing as King Crab. This is actually the IP address of this computer uh, on the network, but this is the name assigned to it. So these two are the exact same thing if you're on the same network. It's just showing you the options. Uh, we really don't need to know anything about this anymore. I'm just showing you what the, the various ways you can, uh, can connect. I'm going to close this out. Now, we've got it installed, and this is what the uh, UI looks like, the user interface, but we need to configure it. The first thing we're going to do is actually ignore everything but folders. This is really all we need to worry about right now. That'll get us to a working uh, installation where we can actually download a file and it'll go and do what we want it to do. So I'm going to click that right now. And we've got a bunch of uh, options here. And I'm actually going to go through them. I'll, I'll go over them really quickly and then I'll go into them and explain uh, how to fill them out properly. First one is a temporary downloads folder. And that is basically where the fire files are temporarily downloaded. Um, obviously, if you have a completed folder, which you have right down here, this is where the completed files will go. Uh, it's just a nice place where if you have all your completed files here, you don't have to worry about incomplete files getting mixed up with the complete files. It's kind of one of those anal retentive things, but it's, it's nice to know. The next thing is minimum free space for temporary download folder. I'm going to put 1G, which is 1 gigabyte. This means that if you're downloading something and there's only one gigabyte of space left, Savin's EBD will actually stop the downloading so you, you will not max out all your space. You'll still have that one gigabyte of space left. Frankly, if you've gotten to one gigabyte, you probably need a couple more hard drives. Permissions for completed downloads, we are not going to worry about this at all. A watched folder is a folder that, um, pretty much your downloads folder, which is what we're going to do a little bit later on. Uh, where if you download an NZB file from anywhere on the internet, it most likely will go just to your downloads folder by default. And if you make your watched folder where, uh, excuse me, if you, yeah, if you make your watched folder the one where the downloads go to, SabNZB will actually will look at that folder and, uh, and try to just automatically add files. It's just kind of another thing to make your life a little bit easier. Watch folder scan speed, we'll get to that. It's how quickly it, it uh, searches that folder. And post-processing script, we'll get to as well. Everything else, we do not need to know. So I'm going to go back to the top here. I'm actually going to shorten this window up so you can see my, uh, my hard drive. I've named my hard drive Monolith for really no good reason. Um, I'll put that down here. And I actually want my files to go to the external hard drive. I don't even want them to touch my main hard drive, which would normally be a Mac Mini. I want it to go right to the external hard drive or the Drobo where I have all my files. So what we need to do is type in the exact place on this uh, drive, which currently has no files, uh, where the temporary download folder will be. So what I'm going to do, just to make things a little nicer, is I'm going to make a folder called Usenet. I'm going to open that one up. And within Usenet, I'm going to make two other folders. One will be called Incomplete, and the other will be called Complete. I'm going to go back. I'm just going to do that. So I have nothing in any of these folders. Now, I want, like I said before, I want all my files to go to my external drive, which is over here. And in order to do that, we need to actually write out the path to the external drive. A very quick way to find out the path of anything, and this is a great tip just in general, is to just go to Terminal, open it up, and drag whatever you'd like to know the path uh, of to. So, for instance, I want to know right now, um, I want to make my temporary download folder this incomplete folder over here. So I'm just going to literally just drag it in the terminal. That's all we're doing. And right here you see volumes, monolith, usenet, incomplete. And I can copy that. I'm going to just close this window up right here. I'm going to paste it in right here. And there you go. So anything that's incomplete will actually just go to this temporary downloads folder. Now. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing, but replace incomplete with complete. This will be our complete downloads folder. Now over here, permissions for completed downloads, we actually do not need to worry about that. But we do want to worry about our watch folder. Now our watch folder, for me at least, is going to be um, my downloads folder, which is right here. And what I'm going to do, again, is go to my home folder, which is where my downloads folder is. Here's my downloads folder. I'm going to open up terminal again. I'm going to drag this right in here. And boom, you see users, Apple Media Center, downloads. I'm just going to copy that, close that up, paste that right here. For the uh, watched folder scan speed, they have five. That's five seconds. Now, if you need that folder search every five seconds, you are downloading way, way too much stuff. 
So what I'm going to do is change this to 600 seconds. That's 10 minutes. And frankly, even that's a bit overkill because most of the time you're either sleeping or out of the house. You're not adding NDB files to this folder. Um, so I think 600 is a good amount. Now lastly, we have the post-processing scripts folder. Now this is actually something we do not need to worry about now for the basic installation, but I still want to address it because down the line it does come into play and since we're in this section right now, we might as well just go over it. So where uh, SavNZB actually sets up a folder for you, and where that is is in your home folder. For me, it's Apple Media Center, and then it's in your library folder. Then you go to application support, then you go to SavNZBD. Now this is the folder where your scripts folder should be. There it doesn't exist though, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and make it. and I'm going to leave it lowercase like the rest of them. Boom. Nothing in that folder yet, but good to have. And just like the other two, I'm going to open terminal. I'm just going to copy this in here. I don't know why it's hanging. Okay, there we go. Copied it in, and I'm going to copy and paste it. But something is a bit different with this one. And that is right here in application support. There's this backslash. In terminal, a backslash signifies a space. Now we actually have to correct that because SavNZBD does not read it like that. So we're just going to copy it and we're going to go and we're going to paste this in just as normal. But right here, I'm actually going to go and delete that backslash. And now we're good to go. Like I said, we don't need anything else here. We're just going to hit save. And now we're done. Now to show you that this works actually, I'm going to close this up. Actually, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open this folder right here. And I actually went ahead and went to my favorite NZB site, which is NZB Matrix, and I downloaded this, uh, it's the NBC fall preview of, of all the 2011 shows that are ultimately going to be canceled in 2012. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to add it to SAV NZBD. As you can see, instantly, it didn't even show up here yet, it was instantly, it instantly created a folder in incomplete. It sometimes takes a few seconds because it uh, does not refresh in real time. And it is already downloading. So the reason it's not refreshing is, like I said, it takes a couple seconds. If I hit refresh like that, you can see it already downloaded 25 megabytes. And right here, boom, it's starting to download right there. Now once it's done, it'll actually just move to the complete folder. But we don't need to show you that. We don't need to wait for this uh, bunch of episodes to, to load. That's, that's it. It's working. Uh, if you download something to your downloads folder right here, it'll actually pick it up automatically and just place it in the incomplete folder until it's done, and it'll put it in the complete folder. But right there, you have a complete installation of SAB NZBD. You're up and running with your NZB files. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple once you have a tutorial for it, so I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, start really digging into SAB NZBD and trying to download files with it. And I hope, you, uh, I hope you like this tutorial. If you liked it, definitely give it a thumbs up. Definitely leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And, um, and please just subscribe, watch the rest of the videos, and check out AppleMediaCenter.com.